welcome back to my channel 5 Minute Economics where I teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes. The topic for today is revenue analysis. The very last week itself I had made a video on the cost analysis and I had promised to you then that I will soon be coming up with a video on the revenue analysis. So here I am for you. Firstly, I'll attach the link of that cost analysis video in the description below so that you can refer to it. In today's video, we'll be talking all about revenue, the total revenue, marginal revenue, average revenue, as well as the numericals, and discussing the revenue under perfect and imperfect competitive markets. So basically, all you need to know about the revenue concepts. So yeah, without wasting any time, let us get started. Also, guys, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already. And do follow me on Instagram at Five minute economics. So, firstly, guys, let me introduce to you the three major concepts under revenue. So, just like cost, we have three concepts under revenue as well the total, average, and the marginal revenue. So, going one at a time, firstly, coming to total revenue, as the name suggests, it is the total amount of income which is received by the firm from selling a given amount of output. So all that what a firm sells, whatever he's getting is the total revenue. Here the formulas are really important. I have written in blue. Please make sure you remember all of them by heart. So TR, which is total revenue, is P into Q, where P stands for price and Q stands for quantity. Further, when we'll be doing the numericals, you'll be even more clearer with these. So remember them, okay guys? Now next coming to average. So in my last video, had I told you the same thing uh, that average in whenever the word average comes, it's per unit. So basically revenue earned per unit of the product sold, which is AR, average revenue is equal to TR upon Q. Anything's total upon the output will give us the average, right? So TR upon Q is the formula for our average revenue. Now I just told you that TR stands for P into Q. So in place of TR, if we substitute P into Q and Nietzsche, if we write Q again, and if we cross cancel, cancel Q, what will we get guys? We will get P. So basically AR is equal to the price. You will be even more clear with this when we go ahead studying the revenue under perfect competition. But for now, just understand that AR is equal to P over here. And why is it? I just told you. Lastly, marginal. So whenever the word marginal comes, we mean additional. So addition is the total revenue, which results from the sale of one additional unit. So that one additional unit will give us the marginal revenue. Same like the marginal cost, we have MRNF as a formula. Here we have TRN minus TRN minus one. So basically the total revenue is total revenue of three minus the total revenue of two. That is N minus one. The previous unit will give us the marginal revenue. So I hope you are clear with these three concepts. Okay guys, so now further moving ahead to the behavior of revenue under a perfectly competitive market. Before I talk all about a perfectly competitive market, let me first tell you what does that mean and what are the few features of it. Basically, it has large number of buyers and sellers, homogeneous products are sold, that is whatever everyone is selling is at the exactly same lookalike, like it's just the same, there are no substitutes. The same price rules the market because everyone is selling at the same, the same thing, right? Then there is no cost on advertisement because if by chance we have a cost on advertisement, then definitely the price will vary. But we want the homogeneous product sold at the same price. So you buy it from here or you buy it from there. It doesn't make a difference to you because it's exactly the same product at the same price. All firms are price takers. The firms do not have any control on the market. They are price takers and not price makers. Whereas the cost of transportation is not included, it is but obvious if we tend to include the cost of transportation, then obviously maybe here somewhere it, the product is you know cheaper and in some other state or some other country the product will be expensive. So we are not including the cost of transportation in our analysis, this is an assumption. And no firm has the right to influence the market because obviously the same thing everyone is selling, no one has an upper hand over each other. And lastly, the firms that enter, free to enter and exit according to their own wish and will. So these are the few features of a perfectly competitive market. Now guys, coming to the schedule of the particular market. So here we have units, which I just told you, Q, okay? We have one, two, three, four, five, two, till up to eight. MR, what is MR is the marginal revenue, which is the additional revenue. Since all the products are homogeneous, everything is sold at the same price, the additional revenue which one is gaining is obviously will be the same. So it's 15 for all if you all can see this. 
नेक्स्ट गाइस टी आर टी आर का फॉर्मूला आई जस्ट टोल यू टी आर का फॉर्मूला इट इज पी इंटू क्यू एंड हियर वी हैव एम आर इंटू क्यू दैट इज फिफ्टीन इंटू वन इज फिफ्टीन फिफ्टीन इंटू टू थर्टी एंड सो ऑन एंड सो फोर फिफ्टीन इंटू एट विल गिव अस वन ट्वेंटी नाउ कमिंग टू ए आर ए आर फॉर्मूला ऑल्सो इट जस्ट टोल यू इट इज टी आर अपॉन क्यू सो फिफ्टीन डिवाइडेड बाय वन फिफ्टीन थर्टी डिवाइडेड बाय टू फिफ्टीन फोर्टी फाइव डिवाइड बाय थ्री सो ऑन वन ट्वेंटी डिवाइडेड बाय एट फिफ्टीन सो बेसिकली टू गेट एम आर टी आर वी आर मल्टीप्लाइंग टू गेट ए आर वी आर डिवाइडिंग एंड इफ यू सी गाइज यू कैन क्लियरली सी एक्चुअली दैट एम आर एंड ए आर बोथ आर सेम here also 15 here also 15 and that is what a perfectly competitive market is is here the average revenue and the marginal revenue as well as the price p all coincide with each other they are all the same okay now guys moving ahead to the diagrams are the perfectly competitive market i just told you to should you remember that keep that in mind we studied over there that mr and ar both were 15 right and both the columns we had 15 so it means they are same and they can be represented by a single straight line so this is our these are our two graphs guys the first one being the mr ar and p so this is a straight line the red line is a straight line vertical sorry horizontal and parallel to the x axis here we can see because mr and ar are same they are represented by the same line they coincide with each other it is also known as the price line guys or also known as the demand curve and you know when a demand curve is like this in shape it's a perfectly elastic demand curve in case you are confused go and watch out my video on elasticity here i would like to tell you one thing why people question why is the average revenue equal to the price at a perfectly competitive market the explanation of this is because price paid by the consumer per unit of the commodity purchased happens to be the revenue per unit of the commodity sold whatever the consumer is paying similarly the per unit uh, same thing the you know the firm is earning by selling that revenue so average revenue is the same as the price guys under a perfectly competitive market this is a very important uh, you know equation or whatever you can call it just remember this identity now coming to total revenue so tr obviously we saw was increasing 15 to 30 45 remember that column similarly over here it is represented by a line which is a 45 degree line it is originating from point 0 because when there is no production but obvious that our total revenue will be zero right so tr is originating from zero it is increasing in a constant manner and this is all about the diagrams for a perfectly competitive market now okay, guys moving ahead to the revenue study of revenue under an imperfectly competitive market what basically is an imperfectly competitive market basically it means guys it is a blend of perfect competition as well as monopoly also known as a monopolistic competitive market here there are large number of buyers and sellers the products are differentiated but through substitutes for example the market of coke and pepsi uh, we know there are people who are pro pepsi and then there are people who are pro coke we all know the difference right they both serve the same purpose they are close substitutes but not the same uh pre people are price makers they are firms according to their own wish and will they put their prices they don't have to be price takers like they were in perfect competitive market here again they are free to enter and exit the industry as per their wish and firms have the right to influence the market obviously they are selling their own products they are differentiated not homogeneous system so wo apni mardi se they can come or enter or exit and influence the market so guys sometimes i do talk in hindi there are some people who tell that no ma'am please don't converse in hindi whereas there are some people who always write ma'am please speak a little bit of hindi what team are you comment below in the comment section coming back to our topic so here we have our schedule for an imperfectly competitive markets where i have taken units in the first column where we have 1 2 3 up to 12 then we have mr which is what guys marginal revenue also known as the price and tr kya hota hai tr is basically the summation of mr which is total of additional of mr will give us the tr and ar we know ar average revenue is the tr divided by q so mr you see guys now mr is not the same how it was in perfectly competitive market in fact it is falling 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 why is it falling because every firm wants to sell its product so it tries to lower the price in order to boost the sale because they all are selling different products they all try to lower the price so that all the consumers are attracted towards their product in doing that our marginal revenue is falling and it even up to goes to zero at 11th unit and after that it goes negative whereas total revenue is simply guys 20 plus 18 38 30 rate plus 16 54 54 so it's like a this shape format we are just adding the total revenue it is increasing but increasing in a diminishing manner 
because we notice guys our mr is falling so the increase ka rate is falling now er is what average revenue average revenue is also falling guys 20 19 18 similarly because people try to lower their price to boost their sales but one thing is to be noticed mr and er are both falling but the fall in mr is much more greater it even goes to zero and negative but the fall in er is slow it's going from 20 to 90 to 18 to 17 you see by one unit here it's falling by two units so both are falling but the fall in mr is faster it even goes to negative average revenue can never be negative because price can never be negative and further we will be doing the diagram after that you will be even more clear with this shit you Further, guys, I'll be explaining to you the diagrams of imperfectly competitive market. Here we have two diagrams. Remember that, guys, whenever you're drawing them, you have to draw them up and down, just the way I have drawn. Always have the labeling, output, x-axis, origin, y. This is just my general opinion. Even I tell my students in class that labeling in economics is really important. If your diagram is well labeled, you definitely get the marks. Otherwise, someone like me, I definitely cut marks for not labeling the diagram correctly. So here we have AR and MR, and here we have TR. Here we have output on the x-axis. Okay. Now, guys, what we notice. This, as I just told you, MR and AR both are falling. Why is AR negatively inclined? AR is and MR are negatively inclined because you know the firms try to uh, lower their price so as to increase their sales. We know, right? The relationship between price and demand. Lower the price, higher the demand. That's why our average revenue is negatively inclined, and so is our MR. But you see, guys, just as I told you, MR ka fall is greater than AR. That's why MR falls, touches the x-axis, and even goes below it, below it. But AR can never touch the x-axis because price can never be zero, guys. Fall in MR is greater than AR. Okay, MR is negative. AR can never be negative. I've written also what I'm speaking. Now coming to TR, which is in the lower diagram, we see initially it is concave. and positively sloping we you know it's increasing in an increasing manner later on after a certain point when it reaches point m our tr starts declining when does that happen but obvious when our mr touches the x axis at that point our tr is at the maximum point post that our tr falls because total revenue declines so that is all about the diagram guys ar mr negatively inclined tr increasing in a diminishing manner and ultimately falling when mr touches the x axis so i hope you are clear with this particular diagram so lastly guys coming to the numericals basically i'm making you do the numericals because i feel once you're done with this video you are done with this chapter you know the concepts you know the hang of numericals So here I'm discussing two very simple numericals with you. Firstly, if P is given as 25, output is given as 15. Simply we have to calculate the TR. TR क्या होता है? We should know the formulas by heart, guys. P into Q. P is given, Q is given. P into Q, 15 into 25 will give us 375. Maybe rupees 375 because TR है, revenue is given as in rupees. Secondly, guys, we have our table which is output, price, TR, and MR. We notice, guys, whatever is given in blue is already given to you, and whatever is in black, I have found out for you. So here, basically, we have output as one, two, three, four, price as seven, six, four, two. TR ne kala hai. Basically, how to find out TR? TR is simply seven into one, six into two, four into three, four into two, seven, twelve, twelve, eighteen. Simple, right? TR ka formula kya hai? P into Q. Whereas when we are coming to MR, guys, MR kya hota hai? Marginal revenue. TR n minus TR n minus one. Remember. So what happens is here because we are beginning from the first unit. We will keep our MR as seven, guys, as the TR. Had we begun from zero, this would have been a dash or zero. Don't write zero; actually, write dash. Remember that, okay? Next, simple, very simple. Five minus, uh, sorry, twelve minus seven will give us five. Twelve minus twelve, zero. Eight minus twelve, minus four. And simply, we found out our MR and TR through these two things which have been given. So I hope you are clear with the numericals. Such type of numericals are asked in the examinations, and I hope you are clear with the entire concept of revenue analysis. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Do like my video and subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you in the next video pretty soon.